horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. Are you still there? Aye! The opening of the western frontier was a time of turmoil and strife for the early pioneers because of the continued hostility of the Indians. But the great advantage to the early settlers and to the small forces of army personnel was the rifle. The arrows of the savages couldn't compete with the death-dealing fire sticks of the pale faces. And comparatively small garrisons of troops could control and repel Indian attacks. But soon, the shrewd Indian chieftains concentrated on getting rifles for their braves by any and every means. The rifle was no longer an advantage to the pioneers and soldiers in an attack. But new hope for the embattled men of the West was on the way. Yeah, we sure got a lot of express aboard this trip. What's those long boxes consigned to Fort Carter, Bill? More rifles? Oh, ho. not only more rifles, Pete, but new kind of rifles that'll change the entire picture of Indian warfare in the West. Those are a new invention, the Winchester repeating rifles. You don't have to reload after each shot. They're lever action. Just keep pumping the bullets in. Holy mackerel, what'll they think of next? I'd hate to have to fight against soldiers who carried that type of gun. Blinky Wade had spent 20 years in the United States Army. As supply sergeant at Fort Carter, Blinky was conscientious, but at times exasperating to the officers because of his habit of using his own judgment in interpreting requisitions which he was required to fill. Old-time officers had overlooked most of Blinky's disregard for rigidly conforming to what was written on requisition blanks. But Major Calvert, a young officer newly appointed to his first post as Fort Commandant, was inclined to look upon Blinky's habit as a flagrant disregard for Army orders. Sergeant Wade, do you know why I sent for you? No, sir. But if there's something I can do to help you learn the ropes here, Major... Our nation, take it. If I can't command this post without asking your help, I'll resign. No need to do that, Major. Seeing as how I've been around here now... Quiet, Sergeant. I'll do the talking. Uh, Yes, sir. I sent a requisition to your desk for a dozen blankets. You changed the order, and we received six dozen. 
What do you have to say to that, sir? Well, sir, I figure it's better to have plenty of blankets. Sometimes when they go scouting for a few days or something like that, some of the men lose blankets, sir. Maybe so, but... Oh, what's the use? You've been here a long time and you know the ropes. Also, I admit you get supplies through quickly. But you must stick to what's written on the requisition, understand? Yes, sir. I've discussed this sort of thing with you before, Sergeant. Yeah, yes, sir. In the future, see that you curb your tendency to change the requisitions. Just as you say, sir. Tomorrow you're taking a detail into Rockton to bring back a load of new Winchester repeating rifles. Say, I've seen one of those rifles. By Jiminy Major, with a hundred of those, in the hands of the troopers here, we could hold off most any number of Indians that might try to attack the fort. I know, I know all that. Just bring the repeaters back here, then I'll issue them to the men. Uh, yes, sir. Also, I sent a requisition to your desk for 12 high drumheads. The drummer has difficulty with his drums because the excessive heat damages the drumheads. <laughs> He just don't know how to take care of them. Never mind that. Just bring the drumheads. Yes, sir. And we also need two drums of oil for the lamps and lanterns. All right, sir. That's all, Sergeant. Remember what I've told you. Yes, sir. The following day, Sergeant Wade and a detail of troopers escorted a large army supply wagon to town. After purchasing the hide drum heads and the oil, the troopers met the train and transferred the many boxes of new rifles from the express car to the wagons. Later, Blinky stopped the wagon on the edge of town. Oh, there. What are we stopping here for, Sergeant? I figure we might as well carry some of those repeaters, men. I'll unload a box of them and pass them out. Just put the old single shots in the wagon. Let's get busy now. Hey, hey, Come on. Us. After distributing the new repeater rifles to his detail of six men, Blinky gave the order to proceed toward the fort. Later, as they rode through a valley, they were startled when... Oh, oh, oh. Indians coming down the slope. Must be a couple of dozen. Use those repeaters, men. This is a chance to try him out. Now, come on. The troopers using the Winchester repeaters had the advantage, not only of longer range, but also of continuous fire. And within a very short time, the Indians, leaving their wounded, gave up and disappeared over the ridge. Why, thunder, look at that. Because of these repeaters, we beat those redskins off. And they couldn't get close enough to do more than crease one or two of us. Wait till the men at the fort hear about this. Get up! Get up! The Lone Ranger and Tonto, riding in the hills outside of Rockton, heard the distant battle and rode hurriedly toward the valley. entered the valley just as the shooting stopped and the Indians rode out of sight beyond the ridge. Easy, Silver. Easy, easy, fella, scout, easy. easy fella. Army wagon. The troopers seem to have driven off the Indians. Ah. From sound of guns, me think there are plenty Indians attacking. Many. And maybe there are only few. We'll catch up to the wagon and find out what happened. It risky with mask on, Kimasabi. I carry a letter from the former commandant to the new one, Major Calvert. If necessary, I'll use that to identify me. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. As the wagon and escort moved along the valley trail, one of the men looked back and saw the masked man and Indian hurriedly approaching from the rear. Hey, Sergeant, look. Masked man and Indian. Oh, oh wait, I... wait, hold it. Don't shoot at them. I know who they are. Oh, 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 oh. Well, Sergeant Wade. Howdy, mister. Mighty glad to see you in Tonto again. You haven't been to the fort since we got a new major. Tonto and I are on our way there now. Oh, we, uh, we heard the shooting. Yeah, Comanches attacked us. About two dozen of them. How did you manage to drive them off with so few men and get by without serious casualties? Uh, take a look at this rifle, yeah. mister. I gave them out to the men when we left town. Oh. Here. One of the new Winchester repeating rifles. Oh, I understand. Them plenty good. They sure are, Tonto. The 
I reckon those Comanches were mighty surprised when we started to use them. It would be unfortunate if the Comanches were to get some of them. Yeah, but it's up to us to see they don't. If you and Tonto are heading for the fort, we'll be glad of your company, mister. Good. We're right along with you. Oh, here's your rifle. All right. All right, let's go. Detail forward! Get up. Get up. Come on. When they arrived at the fort, Blinky introduced the Lone Ranger and Tonto to the Major. Then he went to supervise the unloading of the wagon. The Major read the letter carried by the masked man, then said... Ah, the former commandant writes a good report of you and your Indian friend, sir. He told me about you before he left. I'm very glad to meet you. Thank you, Major Calvert. We came to pay our compliments and to offer our services whenever needed. Well, I appreciate your offer, but the affairs of the Ford are moving smoothly. Yes. Come in. Well, Sergeant Wade? I came to report, sir, that the new rifles are unloaded. If you want to distribute them now, the men will be mighty pleased to get them. I'll distribute them when I'm ready, Sergeant. The Sergeant used good judgment in giving the repeaters to the men in his detail today. What? If it hadn't been for that, Excuse I... Excuse me, sir. Yes? Sergeant, did you distribute those rifles to the men in your detail? Yes, sir. Uh, you see, I, I... distinctly ordered you to wait and let me distribute those new rifles. Well, sir, I sort of had an uneasy feeling... You disobeyed we... my orders. I reckon I did, sir, I'll but... send you to the guardhouse for this. Oh, just a minute, Major. If the escort hadn't carried those rifles, the Comanches would have taken the what? entire wagon load of them. The Comanches? Yes, the wagon was attacked by about two dozen Comanche Indians. Due to the fact that the sergeant had the foresight to issue the repeaters to the men, the Indians were driven off. That's right, Major. I didn't get a chance to tell you. Go but... to your quarters, Sergeant Wade, and stay there until you hear from me. Yes, sir. Oh, by thunder, I don't know what to do with that man. He makes his own army rules, and every time he does... Well... <laughs> Something happens to support his judgment. Is that it, Major? In a way, yes. <laughs> Blinky, as he's fondly called by the man, may exasperate you by his seeming disregard for discipline. But it isn't intentional. Because of his long service with the Army here in the West, he instinctively uses his own judgment in some matters without realizing he's disobeying orders. Maybe so. I, I admit it was fortunate the detail carried the repeaters today. But the Army is run on discipline. And regardless of the consequences, every man, including Sergeant Wade, must abide by it. Well, in some cases, Major, those who make the rules don't realize the situation here in the West as well as Sergeant Wade does. Former commandants have found it wise at times to overlook the sergeant's tendency to use his own judgment. Perhaps. But as long as I'm in command here, I'll not allow it. Come in. Corporal Hawkins reporting, sir. What is it, Corporal? The drummer, sir. He asked for a dozen new hide drum heads. The sergeant brought only two. I distinctly ordered a dozen. The sergeant changed that order. Oh, yes, sir. Also, Sergeant Wade brought back 12 barrels of oil, sir. What? There's no room in the supply cabin. 12 but... barrels? I told him to bring two. I used the word drums of oil. I suppose he stupidly confused that with the order for the dozen drum heads. Oh, no, sir. Sergeant said the drummer ought to learn how to take care of the hide drum heads and didn't need more than two new ones. Also, he said the storekeeper had only 12 barrels left and didn't know when he'd get more, so he took them all. This is the last straw. Load 10 barrels of the oil back under the wagon. Take someone with you and return that oil to town. Oh, yes, sir. But it's sundown. No matter. Spend the night in town and come back to the fort in the morning. Rockton is only a two-hour drive from here. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, and one more thing. Tell the sergeant of the guard to arrest Sergeant Wade. He'll spend 30 days in the guardhouse, and I'll see to it that he's broken to the rank of private. Yes, sir. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue. Infuriated by Sergeant Wade's disregard of orders, the young major commanded his arrest and demotion. The Lone Ranger, realizing there was nothing more he could do to help the sergeant, arose, saying, Tonto and I'll ride to town with the wagon, Major. I'm sorry you see fit to take drastic steps with Sergeant Wade. Yeah, it's the only course left for me, sir. Oh. I'm glad to have met you and your Indian friend. I hope you'll drop in again. Thank you, Major. Adios. Let's go, Toto. Uh -huh. The wagon will be leaving as soon as the barrels of oil are loaded. Good. We'll be waiting at the fort gate. Goodbye, Major. Goodbye, sir. Fort Carter was built on the side of a valley through which ran a wide, shallow creek, separating the fort from the ridge opposite. The fort was some 300 yards from the fast-flowing stream, which came from a heavily wooded area at one end of the valley. The trail to town, on the same side of the creek as the fort, ran parallel to this stream. The Lone Ranger and Tonto, mounted on their horses, waited outside the fort gate for the wagon. It get plenty dark, Kimasabi. Yes, there's no moon tonight. And even if there were, it would be hidden with a heavy overcast. Ah, it better wagon wait till morning. Go to town. Yes, I agree. It's a two-hour trip in daylight. In this darkness, it will take closer to three hours. But that young major's determined to send the oil back tonight. Uh -huh. Too bad he doesn't try to understand, Sergeant Wade. The sergeant is a valuable man to the army. Ah, it's not good him be rested and made into ordinary trooper. It's a matter of pride with the major more than anything else. Yes. Yes. Now, here come Corporal with wagon. Yes. Oh, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. You ready to ride with us, mister? Yes. Good. I'm sorry about Sergeant Blinky. I didn't realize a major would fly off the handle like he did. The major is doing his duty as he sees it. Now, let's go, shall we? Right. Get up. Get Come on, get up. Get him up and call. The darkness was intense and the wagon made slow progress. The trail ran upstream beside the creek through the wooded area. As they moved slowly through the woods, the Lone Ranger, Tonto, and the two troopers heard hoofbeats coming toward them. Oh, 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 Sounds like one horse. Can't see a thing. But the rider can see the lantern on our wagon. Who, 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 it's our army, Scott Hank. Hi, Hank. Hi. Why are you heading for town at this hour and in the dark? The major's orders. Taking something back to town. It's about time they begin to learn a few things. Eh? A masked man and an Indian. Now, they're both friends, Hank. You've heard of the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger? That's right. Man alive, I'm sure glad you're around, mister. We're in for trouble. Well, what do you mean? I've been scouting around. I found out the command. She's a couple of hundred of them. Plan to creep up on the fort in the darkness. What? They learned about a ship and the new rifles. And they plan to get them. Holy mackerel. Dark as it is, they might be able to get over the stockade. Yeah, they know there's only 75 men at the fort. They can creep up, surround the fort in the dark, and then use crude ladders to get inside before the troopers can see them. They're getting on the ridge right now. How did you find out? I saved the life of a Comanche brave once. He tipped me off. They plan to sneak up on the fort an hour from now. What about the townsmen? Uh, Rockton is practically deserted. Everybody went to the rodeo 20 miles away. Anyway, you're only half a mile from the fort. There's still a long way to town. Why not go on to the fort and inform the major? Then suggest that he issue the new repeater rifles at once. Even they won't do much good if the men can't see what they're shooting at. Those Comanches will move up on the stockade and be over it before the men know it. This is the darkest night we've had in months. There's no time to get help. Well, they have lanterns at the fort. Maybe by using all they all have... All lights at the fort should be put out as soon as possible. That's right. But I don't see how... Now, wait a minute. This wagon is carrying ten barrels of oil. Oh, yeah, that's right. I suggest the scout go on to the fort at once to warn them. I think there's a way we can help from here. I'll leave right now, mister. Get up there. Get up. What can we do? The attack is to start one hour from now. Yeah. Let's unload the barrels of oil and carry them to the banks of the stream. All right, let's get busy. Right. Easy, right. Easy. Right. A short time later, the Army scout gave his report to the Major. The new repeater rifles were immediately issued to the men, and they took their posts to watch and wait for the attack. The young major, trying his best not to show his nervousness, stood on one of the ramparts near the front gates, talking to the scout. Oh, tarnation, take this infernal darkness. I can't see a thing. That's right, major. 
There's no way of telling when those redskins will cross that creek, sneak up to the stockade and come at us. They won't make a sound either. The creek's about 300 yards away. They could cross, then climb right up in front of us before we'd know it. The masked man spoke of a way to help. How can he and his friend help when they're half a mile away in the valley? I don't know, Sam. From all I've heard about him, I'm surprised he and the Indian didn't come back with you to do what they could here. I reckon he knows what he's doing, Major. According to what I was told, the Comanches will be starting down the slope from the ridge in five minutes. Then in five minutes, I'll order the men to start shooting. At what? They can't see a thing. And the Comanches will know just where the troopers are placed. They figure the masked man has a plan in mind. And I, for one, would wait. I think the masked man has deserted us. I'm responsible for this fort. I didn't like the way he intimated I was wrong in dealing with Sergeant Wade this afternoon. Yeah, I heard about that. And I agree with the masked man. You forget yourself, sir. No, I don't. I'm hired by the Army, but I'm not an enlisted man, Major. I got a right to express my opinion without being afraid of getting sent to the guardhouse. Now, if you've got any sense, you'll just wait and forget that order to start firing into the dark at nothing. woods, the Lone Ranger, with Tonto and the two troopers, had placed the barrels of oil on the bank of the creek. An opening had been made in the top of each barrel. Then they waited. Finally, the Lone Ranger turned the light of the wagon lantern onto his watch dial. Ooh, five minutes to go. Now we'll dump the oil onto the water and light it. The fast-flowing water will carry the flaming oil down the valley between the fort and the ridge. Let's get busy. All right, do that, girl. The Major waited tensely. Then he struck a match cautiously to look at his watch. Uh, three minutes to go. This waiting hey, is... Major, look up toward the woods. Flames leaping in the air. They're moving swiftly down the valley. Now that no oil on the waters of the creek. Look at that, Major. The flames are lighting up the entire slope. Yes, I can Look, coming down the slope, the Comanches. They're trying to get across before the flames form a wall across the valley. Tell the men to start firing now. Those new rifles will do the trick. They have targets to shoot at. Fire at will! The Comanches had hardly crossed the stream before the flames passed the fort. But the light from the burning oil made them targets for the rapid rifle fire from the fort. Soon, the entire valley in front of the fort was lighted by the flames, and the troopers, using the long-range repeating rifles, took great toll of the attacking Comanches. The Indians had crept forward on foot, leaving their ponies back on the ridge. Surprised and dismayed by the light from the flaming oil and the rapid firing from the fort, they were unable to go back across the creek to their ponies. Finally, running in great disorder, they hurried down the valley, leaving many dead and wounded. The attack was a complete failure, and the Comanches were defeated. Later, the Lone Ranger and Tonto returned to the fort with the corporal and the wagon driver. In his headquarters, the young major appeared embarrassed as he faced the masked man. Mr. I... I want to thank you and your friend for your help. It was a very ingenious plan to send that burning oil down the stream. We were fortunate to have all that oil, Major. Oh, I, uh... I've thought of that. I sent for Sergeant Wade. Good, I'll be glad to see him. Those uh, Winchester repeating rifles prove their worth against great odds, Major. Yes. Because of them, we defeated the attack, though we were greatly outnumbered. Come in. Sergeant Wade reporting, sir. <clears throat> uh, Sergeant, I, uh, I've decided to drop all charges against you. 
Uh, uh, thank you, Major. From now on, Sergeant... I'll you... follow your orders to the letter, sir. If you do, I'll break your neck. <laughs> <laughs> Sergeant, I, I think it's about time I acknowledge that I'm green at this sort of thing. Now on, I'll let you use your own judgment. Why, well, uh, thanks, sir. And you, mister, do you have anything to suggest? Yes, Major, that you follow up your advantage by sending for the Indians' ponies over on the ridge. Then at dawn, round up the balance of the Comanches. They can go far on foot. Not an hour, return and ride with you if you want us to. Fine, fine. Maybe with you and, uh, Blinky to help, I'll learn how to really command a far western post. Major... A man who'll acknowledge his mistake is bound to succeed. Well, we'll see you at dawn. Adios. Good Come on, Adios. Right, sir. Sergeant, I, I am afraid I underestimated that masked man. He's well worth having as a friend and advisor. He sure is, Major. He's the finest hombre I ever met. There's no greater American alive than the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Charles D. Livingston. Tonight's drama was written by Dan Beatty and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger...